Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Check it out. I made a coat, you guys. <laughs> this has been in two years in the making. Maybe not in the making, two years of talking. Um, But I finally did it. Hey, better late than never, right? So I made this coat for the hashtag so fearless challenge that myself and Akram from Akram's Ideas are hosting for uh, the month of March. So when you're done with this video, please go on over to Alex Judge Sews on YouTube. She's going to be sharing her make, which was a messenger bag. And I'm really, I'm going to actually head over there after I'm done filming this <laughs> to go check it out. So let's see, what can I tell you guys? Um, all right, so I'm going to break this video down into three parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about my coat. I'm going to do a pattern review um, on the Grainline Studio pattern. And I'm also going to share um, eight things and that I learned while making this coat. So those eight things may be kind of like, um, you guys probably already know about that stuff, but for someone who's never made a coat before, they may be helpful because I think they would have been helpful for me um, when I first started this. So, All right, my coat. Um, I made version B, which is the longer version right here, and then I decided to put the hood instead of using the collar. So, I made it out of a Michael Kors um, red wool that I found on mood.com. Um, I bought it two years ago, so it's not going to be available anymore, unfortunately, because it was um, limited quantities. But, yeah, okay, so... <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while since I, I made a video, so I apologize if this is hard, awkward to watch, but okay. So I made the long version, um, it covers your bum, which I needed because it's really windy and cold uh, out here in the Midwest in the winter, and then it has pockets on the front, it has um, these three toggles, and I actually made these toggles, I made the entire thing, so I used um, this leather right here. I bought off um, some other scraps off of Etsy and I used my Cricut Maker to cut out the shape. The cording I bought at Tandy Leather. And then the buttons were from Mood.com. So, and then, um, let's see. You have like this little thing that covers your zipper and you have a separating zipper, which this is my first time sewing the zip. And then, la-da, check out this lining. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? So, uh, I love this coat. Okay, so <laughs> this lining um, I bought is quilting cotton that I picked up from Joanne, and I quilted it on some thinselit that I used to interline the main body of the coat. The lining of the hood is Bimberg rayon lining that I picked up from Stone Mountain Daughter Fabrics. And I interlined the hood and the sleeves with um, cotton flannel. And then I also used the same rayon lining for the sleeves so I just had something like slippy to help me get my uh, arm in there. So, the reason why I decided to line, interline my hood and my sleeves um, with flannel instead of the fencelet is mainly because the fencelet is pretty bulky. So when I made my mock-up, <clears throat> sorry guys, when I made my mock-up, the hood was really bulky and I didn't want that, but I still needed some extra warmth to, um, you know, for protection or to provide me <laughs> warmth <laughs> from the wind and the cold. So I interlined it with cotton flannel. And then I had every intention of using the thinselet for the sleeves, but when I made the sleeves, I tried them on before attaching them to the coat, and they were pretty tight. And when I bent my elbow, um, it kind of hurt, like, the crease in my elbow. So I just went ahead and um, used the cotton flannel for that, again, to, to provide some warmth and um, some more structure to the sleeve. That way it wasn't just all limp, because um, when you look at the rest of the jacket, it's pretty substantial. And then... I did add a loop, um, this, stayed, this wasn't a part of the pattern, but I added a loop to it so I could hang it up, um, you know, when I go out to public places, like to the restroom or something, I could hang it, and it would be fine. So, not to toot my own horn, you guys, but is this not the most beautiful jacket that you've ever seen? Because 
I think this is the most beautiful jacket <laughs> that I've ever seen. Um, yeah, I'm so happy with how this turned out. I'm very proud of myself. So I still have to press it and lint roll it, <laughs> but I'm really excited to um, start wearing that coat out. <coughs> okay, so here is the pattern. Um, this is a printed pattern. This is actually, uh, Sally, if you're watching this, <laughs> This is your pattern from my first vlogmas when you won this, so I'm going to put my email address below and see if you can resend me your address um, because I never received that email from you. So I still have your pattern for you. Um, right, so here is the pattern. Uh, like I said, it has two views. You can do a shorter view. This one hits um, probably around your hip, and then you have the longer view, which is the one that I made. And you could also do a collar or a hood. So for the fall time, I have some um, plaid fabric that I'm going to use to make the shorter version with the collar, because I think that will look really nice uh, for fall time. Okay, so as far as measurements go, um, my measurements <laughs> when I thought that when I made my muslin, right, so I thought my measurements put me in a size, straight size 4 because I had not remeasured myself, um, probably for like the, my last project, which is back in January, I want to say, so, um, but they're so long, suggested that if you wanted to use thin slit to go up a size, so that's exactly what I did, and so I made the straight size 6. Now, when I made my muslin, um, the bottom part where the hip area was, was pulling apart, and I'm like, hmm, that's kind of weird. So, I just went ahead and re-measured myself, <laughs> and you guys, I'm sorry this is TMI, but my butt got a little bit bigger <laughs> since the last time I measured myself, and it actually put my hip in the size 6, so... Yeah, I guess that's maybe something else that I learned. I'll add to the list is remeasure myself before every project. Because I didn't think that my butt would grow, but it has. Um, anyways, so what I did was I made the size 6 for the bust and the waist, and then graded out to a size 8 in the hip, and it fit a lot better. Alright, so the instructions. This is also another reason why I was kind of afraid to make this coat was one... It's labeled as um, advanced for difficulty, and I'm like, you know, I don't really think I'm an advanced sewist. And then check out this instruction booklet. <laughs> this is the most robust booklet of instructions that I have ever seen, and let's see how many steps there were. 61 steps. 61 steps and like 40 pieces. And I think it was like 40 pieces to cut out. Which was a lot, so that was like intimidating to do. So, as you guys can see, I didn't cut <laughs> the paper. Instead, what I did was I bought the PDF and printed out what I needed because I did not want to trace 40 pieces. So, yeah, um, that was just kind of a side note on why I've been kind of nervous to make that coat. So, for the pattern. This, if you guys have never made a coat, I will suggest, if not making this one, maybe the Yates coat from Greenline Studio, because it doesn't look like there's as many pieces to it. But Greenline Studio, to me, hands down, write the best instructions, and their sew alongs. Honestly, I think their sew alongs are what make their, like, company, to me, like, that one step up, because they are so well done, and... I have never made a coat before. I have nobody here to like um, hold my hand or for me to ask questions to. So between using the instructions and using their sew along, I had no problems understanding what I needed to do. And having that sew along, I felt like there was somebody there with me, like guiding me through and, you know, showing step by step how to do it if I couldn't figure it out from the instructions. So I will have to admit that this pattern was very well drafted and very well written and I'm very impressed <laughs> with this and I don't know why I'm always so impressed with Green Line because they do a really good job this is um, probably my favorite um, indie pattern company so yeah I would say if you're looking to make something um, a little more advanced check out Green Line and see what they have 
because they do a great job. So I'm very impressed with this um, pattern. All right, let's see, what else? Oh, okay, so the eight things that I learned, and they could be like some tips and stuff as well. So the first one is take your time. Do not rush trying to make this, okay? Because I think that if you try to rush and make a garment that has a lot of steps, that has a lot of pieces, you're gonna be very overwhelmed and the stress is gonna play into a factor of making mistakes, which is gonna make you feel more stressed out. And it's overall, I don't think you're going to be as successful as if you take your time. So what I did was I wrote down, do I have my, what I wanted to do. Okay, so what I did was I just made a schedule, right? I broke that, broke it down on a piece of paper. And if you watched my um, vlog where I was making the muslin, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I put every day what steps I wanted to complete. And so I broke it down to kind of like keep me, you know, on track. And then if I didn't complete all those steps, I didn't stress myself out. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm doing a good job. I made good progress today. <laughs> and I would stop whenever I would feel tired or if I felt hungry or thirsty or if I noticed I was starting to make more mistakes, I just stopped. I stopped, put my stuff on my dress form, I left it for the night, and then came back when I had better energy. And I was making less mistakes that way, I was feeling less frustrated, and it was helping my confidence because I wasn't feeling like, oh man, I have to rip everything out and I'm not doing a good job. So honestly, I think my number one tip is to take your time making something like this. If not like this, or something you're like nervous to make. Take your time. <laughs> okay, the second thing um, that I have written down is to sew your sleeve facings onto your sleeves before attaching your sleeves to the coat. So, the reason why I say this is because I followed the instructions step by step, <laughs> and it had me put the sleeves and everything on, and then when it got to making the linings and the facings, which were like 20 steps further away, it had you attach the facings, the hem facings, to your sleeves. Now, I saw, found this to be very difficult because the coat was already very big, and I don't have a lot of space on my desk, so it was taking up a lot of space. And then it was heavy, so trying to like maneuver and twist the sleeve and turn the whole body of the coat to get it through the machine was not an enjoyable experience. So when I made this coat, I went ahead and just attached the facings before I attached it onto the body of the coat. So easy because all I had was just this little piece of fabric, right, for my sleeve that I just had to worry about going through the machine and being on the side over here. All right, number three would be invest. If you can, invest in tools. And I say this because you're going to be investing a lot of time and probably a lot of money on your material cost, right? So I have three tools here that I found to be um, what I use the most and I found the most helpful to have. So the first one is a sleeve roll. Um, I use this to press open the seams on my sleeve and I found this to be super helpful for that. Um, these are only like 11 bucks at Joanne, so not like overly pricey and something good to have because I think you, I would use this probably um, on more things. I'll figure it out, but right now <laughs> I just use it on my sleeves and I found that super helpful when pressing my seams. Okay, speaking about pressing, invest in a Taylor's clapper. So what this is is just like a heavy... Maybe not heavy, but like a, um, it's substantial weight, okay? Piece of block, and what you do is you press and like steam your seam, and then you put this on top of the seam, and the weight helps both flatten it, and then it also traps the heat in between the wood and your garment, so it like makes it, um, it traps it. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little dry, you guys. So it'll, it'll trap the steam in between your garment and the block, and then the, the weight will help flatten it, and it'll make it nice and flat. And um, overall, a better finish, I thought. Okay. Now this one is the more pricier one. Um, these are duckbill scissors. Now, this is not a must, but it's going to make your life a lot easier because you're going to be grading a lot of seams. You are constantly grading seams in a coat, or at least in this one. 
And what these do, if you've never seen these before, you have this part, which is a scissor, and then you have this back part, which kind of looks like, you know, a duck bill. Um, it's flat, so this prevents you from accidentally cutting your seam on the back part. So you kind of just like lay it along and trim it and it'll trim the seam that you want graded. A lot easier <coughs> um, than using a pair of scissors. Because I noticed that when I was just using regular scissors, if I wasn't taking my time or if I wasn't paying attention, I was also cutting that other seam and I just needed, um, you know, to grade the front seam. So those are the three things I was using the most and I think um, provide, would be very helpful if you guys added those to your toolkit. Okay, number four, use a walking foot. <laughs> I did not use a walking foot when I was making my muslin and I found myself getting very upset with my machine, but it turns out I just needed to switch my foot and using the walking foot was fantastic. So, oops, sorry. <laughs> For those of you who are new to sewing and don't know what a walking foot is, it is, it looks like this, at least for my singer it does, and it has um, feed dogs, I don't know if you guys can see right here, they come down on the foot, so you have like your feed dogs that go through your foot, and then you have the feed dogs on your machine, and what they do is they work in tandem, they work together to feed your material together at the same time, versus like a regular foot, Sometimes you'll find that like the material on the bottom is moving faster than the material on top and things aren't matching. This will prevent that. And this is also really good for bulkier fabrics, um, I find. So, walking foot. Okay, next thing is use a longer stitch, stitch length. Um, I usually, on my machine, my machine goes like one to four, so four is like the basting stitch. So on my everyday things that I've been sewing, I usually put my stitch length at around a two, a two and a half. And um, that didn't really work out for the thicker fabric. So I ended up making it three, um, maybe like three and a half. And I found that it went through much smoother. And even the stitches were not like super far apart like they would be for like a thin cot cotton. They actually look comparable to what like the two, two and a half stitch looked like on a cotton dress. Okay, the next thing is press your garment <laughs> as you go. Okay, so after every time I finish the seam, I press the seam and I press the rest of the coat, the material. Um, I was constantly pressing that thing and I think it helped uh, with like the finishing of it. It still needs some pressing now, but it's not as bad as when I just made my muslin and didn't press anything. I was just sewing it through. But um, I think pressing it throughout, after every step, um, it worked out and it made the coat nice. <laughs> okay, have a, number seven, have a variety of needles. And I say this because the needle that you need to sew the thick fabric is not going to be the same needle you're going to be using sewing your lining together if you're using a thinner lining. So I kept on hand a... Um, needle for to sew the bulky parts of my coat so like anything that had to deal with the wool or when I was um, quilting the thin slit onto the um, lining I had a needle for that then I also had a microtex needle for when I was working with the rayon lining and then I also had a uh, leather needle thank you Sally for that suggestion <laughs> I also got a leather needle to sew on the um, toggles onto my coats. So I used three needles throughout this whole project. You're not going to use the same type of needle for every part of your coat, so keep that in mind. Alright, and then the last one, <laughs> you guys, this is really silly. Know the nap of your fabric, even if it's like, to me, I knew that nap was like the direction of a fabric, and then I also knew that velvet had a nap so like one way would be like more rough and the other way would be more soft and I didn't think that nap could do with like just plain solid fabrics but it is <laughs> so you can't really tell on the coat like you would with a velvet fabric but for instance when I brush my hand down this is smooth However, on my sleeve, when I brush it down, it's rough. 
but when I brush it up, it's smooth, like how I how it would feel brushing down on this. So that's just something that like um, it doesn't affect the look of your garment, but like lint rolling, I'm gonna have to be careful because I think I'm gonna have to lint roll in different directions. So that's just like something um, kind of silly. Like when I noticed, I was like. Oh no, this thing this had a nap to it and I didn't even think to check for that. So yeah, just um check for that. So right, this video is getting kind of long. So I hope you guys enjoyed um this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you found those eight um lessons learned useful. Um and also, if you guys have been sewing for a while, if you're more advanced into your sewing journey, let me know of any tips or tricks or Anything um, that you think would be helpful for new people to know when trying to be more um, advanced in their sewing? Like, what did you guys find most helpful when you were um, in the beginning stages and looking to improve your sewing skills? Uh, leave that in the comment below. Uh, let's see, what else? If you like this video, uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And then head on over to Alex's uh, channel. I'll put a link in the description box below. And check out her make. And then uh, following her is going to be Maeve Fanning. Um, hers will be up on Wednesday. So, yeah. Go ahead and check everybody out. I will put a, a little card up here for the uh, Sew so Fearless Challenge announcement video that myself and Akron, we both posted one to our channel. And... I think if there's anything else I think that's it so um yeah this I feel very accomplished oh that's another thing too let me know what garment you guys were afraid to make and you went ahead and made it and you felt so accomplished and it gave you so much confidence I'd really like to know those stories um because I think this is it I think making this coat I feel like I can do make anything now maybe <laughs> Alright you guys, thanks for coming by and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.